Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to be discussing hydroxy citric acid, uh, which is the main fat burning ingredient that is found in supplements like Garcinia Camboge and HydroxyCut. We're going to start this video off with the 2014 footage, just a short little video from back in the day, uh, me getting the actual um, food itself. So sit back and enjoy. Hey everyone, I'm about to show you one of my top secrets here. You want to know when you're a natural pro bodybuilder? When you when you understand this thing to science, we're gonna get some uh, some fat burning foods here, folks. Then I got me some natural hydroxy citric, uh, my some natural hydroxy cut. Tamarind contains hydroxy citric acid, also known as Garcinia cambogia. You've probably heard of it recently. Uh, there you go. I got the actual food. I didn't get the supplement. All right, you guys, so I showed a little bit of footage, too, of 2013, uh, me competing um, in training and so forth, and I was definitely uh, in, you know, prudently consuming uh, Garcin um, tamarind, actually, the actual food source. Um, I was consuming it at that time, and I was just consuming it sensibly, you know, just I knew the science behind it, so I implemented it as such. Now, um, we know that there's a supplement hydroxy cut out there, right? And as I mentioned, it's basically, I think they basically got that term from hydroxy citric acid. And there's only, there's two main sources, really the main source is tamarind, the actual food itself. And then I, I just learned researching for this video, hibiscus tea also contains it. And it's interesting because both tamarind and hibiscus tea have a sour taste. So there's certainly an interesting, interesting connection there. Um, but you know, instead of the supplement, guys, I'm more interested in, as I've mentioned in, in previous videos, and one of you guys commented saying you appreciate the fact that I focus on the foods, which is something that isn't talked about, and for obvious reasons. I mean, you know, it's you, you make money on supplements, you don't really make as much on foods. Uh, but that being said, um, here is actual tamarind itself, and they actually sell it in this form sometimes, but I typically get it in this form, which is actually the block. And I actually like to get the block that has. Um, more of the crushed up, um, I guess, rind and, and so forth. And it has seeds, but you can just kind of carefully p uh, pick the seeds out. Uh, but essentially, let's dive right into the science, guys. Uh, so I thank you for guys for taking the time. So let's just dive right in, all right? So here we have um, the, the main fat burning mechanism. So in this schematic here, we're going to discuss um, uh, one of the fat burning mechanisms, which is... Uh, the hydroxy citric acid is a competitive inhibitor of ATP citrate lyase, or ACLY. And as you see here, the X, it is an inhibitor of that, which obviously inhibits, inhibits uh, fats, fatty acid synthesis, or fat formation, and it reduces fat accumulation. Now, what's interesting here is it's also a stimulator of AMPK, which you will learn later, a new finding in, in, in this regard. And I talked about PPAR and, and, and that and, and all this kind of aligning with beta oxidation or, you know, fat burning fat. And so this just kind of shows, you know, this kind of this kind of come in full circle here with how these things are really kind of aligning. OK, so essentially we have um, hydroxy citric acid is a inhibitor of ACLY. And this is an important step in fat formation. Now, how is it an important step in fat formation? Well, uh, when you inhibit this, um, you decrease malonyl-CoA levels. And malonyl-CoA is a fat formation coenzyme that is formed by the carboxylation of acetylcoenzyme A by acetylcoenzyme carboxylase. Don't worry, we're going to go into schematic to break this down, okay? So as you see here, here's malonyl-CoA, all right, the fat formation coenzyme. And if you see on the right, you have fuel deprivation, which is basically like nutrient deprivation, if you will, caloric restriction, okay, think that, muscle contraction, think exercise, right? That's going to inhibit the fat formation, obviously, you exercise, you burn fat, and so forth, right? Well, caloric restriction, same thing. On the left-hand side, you have nutrient excess, or if you can also look at this as catabolic anabolic, which I've talked about this, the systemic signaling, and why I truly believe I have the, I've cracked the obesity code. It's just a matter of me getting the business uh, and the people to listen. Uh, I need to get more following, because this stuff is I, I'm, I'm, it's not about me, it's about the evidence, and I'm, I'm good at reading evidence. So here, guys, you have on the left, 
high levels of glucose and insulin, right? You have insulin resistance and so forth. That's in an obesogenic state, and you have a sedentary lifestyle inactivity. Of course, you're going to, you know, you're going to increase uh, this fat formation coenzyme, right? You're going to stimulate it. So this kind of shows it, guys. So essentially, hydroxycitric acid inhibits this fat formation enzyme. Okay, it's one of the inhibitors. Um, now, here, let me just go ahead and break down this schematic a little further. So you have citrate lyase on the left, CL, leads to the formation of acetylcoenzyme A, but that's inhibited, right? So we can't even get to the carboxylation by this acetylcoenzyme carboxylase, which leads to the malonyl co coenzyme A and one of the fates is fatty acid synthesis or fat formation. All that kind of stops right here with this, uh, with this inhibitor of this step. So that's one of the fascinating uh, aspects to hydroxycitric acid, also, also known as hydroxycitrate. Now the other step is that it actually partitions uh, carbohydrates to be stored as glycogen. And so in other words, it's not really a carb blocker, it's a carb relocator. All right, so what it does is it reduces the, the uh, it's called de novo lipogenesis. It reduces the rate or the amount of carbs that get stored as fat. Now typically carbs don't get stored as fat at a high rate, and if they do, it actually expends some energy. Okay, there's a thermic effect to that, that process of converting it, okay? But that being said, that may be different people who are obese. So I don't have all the answers, guys. For those who are overweight and obese, they may have a higher rate of de novo lipogenesis, which all kind of would make sense, quite frankly, because uh, you're stimulating malonyl coenzyme A to a higher level and so forth. So um, all this is fascinating, guys, um, and it's connected. But basically, um, tamarind or hydroxycitric acid, the ingredient in tamarind, it reduces the... Uh, it, it partitions or shuttles carbohydrates to be um, stored more as glycogen. So not only does this help with fat loss in the sense that less carbs are being stored as fat and you're storing less fat in general uh, because of this, but it also could have performance benefits because it optimizes glycogen uh, re you know, restoration, which is important for, for those who are uh, you know, in endurance and in sport performance. So that's another fascinating aspect. All right, so let's move along. All right, guys, so here's... Here's the really fascinating new findings. There's two of them mainly. Number one, hydroxycitrate is a caloric restriction mimetic, believe it or not. Isn't that something? It is an inhibitor of this ACLY or the citrate lyase, and it causes the um, acetylcoenzyme A depletion or reduction, which is, leads to protein deacetylation, and obviously that leads to uh, autophagy. And, you know, Dr. Rhonda Patrick talked about this, and she, she presented it elegantly about the essential amino acids and protein deacetylation and how it leads to increase in AMPK and uh, increases autophagy, right? Well, here you have the hydroxycitrate, which is kind of doing this, a similar thing, and it's a caloric restriction mimetic. Um, she, they also touched on that in her video. Now, it's also sold as an over-the-counter weight loss agent commercialized in the United States. So... You have a fat loss benefit from two angles. Number one, those two mechanisms that we just mentioned. But number two, it's a caloric restriction mimetic. Um, so now the last thing I want to talk about is the gut microbiome, which I've talked about how that's going to be the forefront on the next frontier. And I learned a lot about it in Denver. Um, hydroxycitric acid amplifies the effects of uh, probiotics in, in uh, modulating the gut microbiome. And... Um, and what it did was it decreased the hyperammonia producing um, bacteria, suggesting the potential to reduce obesity through the, through the manipulation of the gut microbiota under a high fat diet, which leads me to my last point here, guys. And this is something that I came across a new study on ammonia. Ammonia is, is a waste product and is produced by typically um, uh, high protein diets or high fat diets, which what does that mean? It's a low carbohydrate diet. And so Oftentimes, you'll, you'll, you can sometimes smell ammonia off a person's sweat when they're on a low-carb diet because basically it's, it's accumulating. And ammonia is a waste product. Now, the hydroxycitric acid helps to reduce this uh, ammonia-producing bacteria, right? And just a last thing I want to point out is ammonia actually inhibits the production of short-chain fatty acids, which is really um, the sign of... That's not a good situation. That's, that's creating gut dysbiosis. Now, when you have a gut microbiome that produces short-chain fatty acids such as butyrate and so forth and propionate, then you're going uh, to have some, that, that actually has been shown to be nourishing to the large intestine and so forth. 
and it's just fascinating stuff. So all this is connected, guys. And so with that, I'd like to just thank you for watching. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, guys. And um, again, I'm not recommending uh, or, or making any kind of um, you know recommendations. This is just information, okay? And me as my personal choice, I don't get the supplement. Um, I just think it's a waste of money. Plus, the safety concern is linked up more to the supplement than it is the actual food source, right? And that makes sense because a lot of times when you take things from their natural state and you isolate them and you mega dose it or increase the, the, the dosage of it, it's like that saying, you know, that the dose makes the poison. So, um, so for me, I'm going to stick to just, you know, eating the food uh, in moderation as, and as part of a well-balanced diet. But what, what I would also say is there's actually a study that was named Malabar Tamarine, uh, a food that could potentially... Um, you know, be, uh, help with weight loss or, or really be uh, uh, help obesity, pre prevent obesity. And the study came out in 1988. And I actually have the study. I printed it out way back when, when I was competing and really trying to understand the science. So with that, guys, thank you for watching. Tune in next time.